Okay. We're at Roy Pidcock again. There's Keith. Hi. And it's Dayglow. He's going to be riding my GS. Looking good. There's Toby on the R1200 Scrambler. R9T, I should say. And I'm going to be taking out this, the F850 GS. So let's go do this. All right, pretty excited. The guys here at Roy Pidcock have hooked us up. There's my main man, Toby. Keith's just up there. Can't miss him. <laughs> He's going to be taking out my GS. And I'm taking this out. I've been very curious to uh, take out the smaller capacity adventure machines. Wow. It's a lot taller than I thought as well. Uh, this one, this particular model is the standard, so it doesn't have a TFT screen, gutted, and uh, doesn't have any other toys, but it'll give you a good understanding of what this bike is all about. There's also, I believe, a parallel twin, 850, so uh, a different type of bike for me completely in regards to engine, and uh, I'll be taking this out after Toby to share my thoughts on that as well, but Toby's going to take the lead on this. It sounds great. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on this. So without further ado, let's go do this. <laughs> and I stalled it. That scrambler looks amazing in my rear view mirrors. Oh, this feels very peculiar. Very peculiar, jumping straight off that thing onto this is ob the obvious, it's the, it's the weight thing. <laughs> well, it's certainly a nice place to be and it's much taller than I thought too. Not what you want, is it? A whole bunch of traffic when you just want to go out on a test ride. However, being so light and slim does pay off when uh, trying to filter. It's very easy to ride. It totally looks amazing on that bike. And again, the weather's with us. A great day to take out a couple of bikes for a test ride. Again, I wanted to uh, share that the, this won't be about facts and figures. Um, this is more going to be a reflection on how the bike feels to, uh, to a regular rider. Because that's what, uh, what, what, what we are. Just regular riders. And uh, all those facts and figures are really just stuff to talk about down the pub. On the real world. They don't mean all that much when you're on the actual machine. Okay, Let's see if I can get it out of second gear. It's a very different feeling completely than this engine. And it's very quiet in comparison to uh, any other machine I've ridden before. But the seating position is fantastic. It's very, very comfortable, very upright that my legs are incredibly comfortable. This is a very nice place to be. All in all, I'm impressed. Very positive initial impressions. There's no quick shifter, there's no toys, no TFT on screen on this thing. This is literally a bare bones base model, which, uh, it's actually quite nice, I guess, because it lets you focus on the actual machine rather than anything else. 
but I would be happy to, to uh, do some touring on this and it would be a fantastic commuter because it's so light again relative to uh, to what I'm used to I instantly feel at home on the bike being quite accustomed now with uh, BMW machines the switch gear all makes sense nothing too complicated very intuitive as well and I think they have a very good quality feel to them as it should do because uh, that what that's what comes with a a premium price with a BMW now if I was to go for uh, this machine it would very much be the adventure variant I think uh, both its looks and its stance are much more appealing uh, than, the, than the base model but nonetheless this is a cracking little bike I'm not used to the engine at all I'm uh, much more accustomed to all the torque of the boxer and it does sound a bit tinny if I'm honest which uh, doesn't appeal so much to me so uh, an aftermarket can would have to go on now as I said a moment ago this won't be all about facts and figures but I'll be happy to provide all that information on screen right now <laughs> this is great fun now we're on the dual carriageway I'm plowing along about 70 miles an hour and yeah there is a lot more wind and a little bit more buffeting than I'm, uh, I'm used to but that being said I'm not being blown away this little screen is, is doing, uh, doing an effective job or protecting me and I believe it can go up as well I think it is adjustable but again if, if I was to purchase this I would definitely get a, a bigger screen but yeah top marks for wind protection I'm impressed now the very very initial impressions are that it's a it's a solid bike it's nice it's, it feels it does feel a quality bit of kit like with all uh, BMW machines that I've ridden to date but I'm struggling to get on board with this engine it just uh, doesn't fill me full of confidence if I'm uh, I'm honest with you Go on. that being said it is brand spanking new a brand spanking new bike it's literally only done 90 miles yeah I think uh, I think this engine's got that uh, sewing machine thing about it you know it's got a it doesn't have that satisfying thump that the, the boxer twin has but that is a much bigger capacity machine I know that and I'm fully aware that they are completely different machines and I guess this isn't aimed at the same crowd but saying that you know it, it is a GS it's the little brother so maybe it should still be considered in the same same class you know but I'm just shooting from the hip here this is just my initial my initial thoughts I think uh, it's he knows I think that it would be a lot more suited for off-road it would give a lot more confidence to uh, new riders to the off-road environment with a bigger capacity machine due to its balance and its weight and it certainly has a lot of uh, a lot of power and it's very smooth as well so it's not all bad
<laughs> it's crazy seeing my bike up ahead. Keith's going to be taking out the 1250 GS afterwards, so I thought it'd be a good comparison for him. Oh, it's pretty here to take out the 1200 um, and then go straight on to the 1250. Do you know what it is? I I just don't think I'm as that confident on this machine that as I am on the the bigger adventure. I think that's what it boils down to. I'm going to let Toby go. Because I think I'm holding him up. I think the dash on the bike looks really good. Even though it's not the, the fabled TFT screen in all its glory. As a base model, you've got everything you need on this, uh, this display. It's got a nice clear rev counter. And we've got the digital screen as well for the speedo. Fuel gauge gear indicator all that good stuff so yeah very functional yeah I even like the the paint color yeah I think the the graphics on the bike look fantastic too I really like the HP white blue and red designs makes it look a lot more sportier I think all in all I think this is a very very functional bike that would be that home uh, during any kind of commute. It's also very tall. I think it's taller than my GS. I'm uh, literally tiptoeing on uh, on junctions and intersections and what have you. That's uh, something I didn't account for. And uh, although the, the seating position and the way the pegs are, it's extremely comfortable. Um, I'm six foot, so. Uh, just to give you guys a point of reference. I give it top marks for comfort. I think it's extremely, extremely nice place to be. You know, it's upright, straight back, wide bars, very easy to ride through traffic for the commute. And I think, uh, although it may not have been its intended purpose, this would be a fantastic daily commuter due to its uh, general size as in width you'll be able to dart in between all the traffic with ease. It's weight, because it's very light. And uh, yeah, it's a very appealing package all in all in regards to that. But anything else, I just think it's a, just a bit vanilla really. Quite honestly, that's a brutal, very, I know that sounds terrible, but I just don't think it has the extra oomph or appeal that its uh, bigger brother has and uh, this wouldn't be a, a cheap bike either especially if you went uh, with the the adventure variant with all of its tft screens and panniers and all that kind of good stuff you know i would argue that it would just be worthwhile looking for a, a used 1200 gs if you were determined to have a uh, BMW or look at alternatives such as the uh, Triumph Tiger 800 or indeed KTM 790 Adventure also doesn't have any uh, it's not a it also dips quite a lot so I'm assuming the suspension is very different no telelever suspension here but again it is a smaller bike so that's probably to be expected. And do you know what? I think um, I think it says it all when I'm sitting here on this bike and I'm just looking at Toby on the, the R9T and that's all, I've just got so much bike envy. And I think that says it all really. I'd rather, rather be on a different bike. But again, this is not uh, to say this is a bad bike. It's all about what your intended use is for. But for me, this isn't enough for day-to-day -day fun it would be fantastic as I've said multiple times for that daily commute but I don't believe this is enough to give you that smile factor for those Saturday blasts or weekend tours <laughs> <laughs> I 
That exhaust sounds incredible. Yeah, I think, uh, it's a brutal thing to say, but I think the bike's very uh, vanilla. And I'm sure I'm going to get a, a lot of hate for that, but I, that's what I, I find it. It's a perfectly functional bike. Yeah, a perfectly functional bike that looks nice and is very solid. But I, I just question if it's got enough character or soul. But I am really, really pleased I've got the opportunity to take the bike out. It's something that I've wanted to experience for quite some time. And uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day, is experiencing these bikes when you get the chance. It's all about personal taste and uh, preference at the end of the day. For me, it's quite clear that the 850 is not the right machine for me. And this is why we go on these test rides and I wanted to share my thoughts with you on it. But I wanted to say a massive thank you to uh, Roy Pidcock again for really coming through and letting us take the bikes out. It's a great dealership and a really good team there and good tea and coffee too. <laughs> oh, come on! She does get up there, but you just got to give it a lot of oomph. I, I think uh, she feels quite underpowered from what I've come from, which is that in front of us, because that thing's got torque for days. Whereas this does not. <laughs> or at least it doesn't feel like it. I'm also having real issues with the, the gearbox as well. I'm, I think the gearbox and the GS, as in the bigger brother, is a lot smoother. I'm struggling to get through the gears, which has surprised me. I'm gonna let Toby go. Do you know what the word that keeps not rattling around in my head? as a descriptive word with this bike and it's going to sound awful it sounds tinny it feels tinny to me and that's not a word you want to associate with a bike you know it sounds like i've got so much hate for it but it it certainly isn't the uh my intention it just isn't the right bike for me <laughs> i keep going to change gear without my clutch i'm too used to a quick shifter Come on, girl! There we go! Up, up, and away! Well, I'm going to take away a lot from this ride. Well, number one, obviously, that the bike isn't for me, but more importantly, from your point of view, that this bike does have a lot to offer for the right person. I know that sounds a bit silly. However, I know what I mean. <laughs> I think that this is a very capable do-everything bike. It may be a, a, a perfect entry point into the BMW touring range or GS range I think it would be a fantastic option for someone looking for a commute commuter bike I also think it would be a very very good option for someone looking for looking for their first uh, tourer because I cannot underestimate just how comfortable this thing is the pegs are at just the right position and the seats at just the right angle. It's incredibly, it really is an incredible night. Take two. It really is an incredible place to be. That screen does give a lot more protection than you would actually think. And with the options that come with BMW, it's back catalogue of parts and options. You'd be able to kit this out to a very, very good spec. So. I do think it would be a very good option as an initial GS tourer if you didn't want to go for the big mighty GS with all of its size and bulk because I do understand that it's a big bike and does put a lot of people off and while talking about all this stuff I'm starting to grow to like the engine a little bit more I'm getting to terms with it I think it's something you would get to used to and have fun with over time Well, that was a really good loop. Thank you again to Keith for taking point and 
showing us through a nice little uh, back roads and dual carriageway and whatnot around Nottingham. Oh, <laughs> they're really good. Um, that sounds incredible. I have one issue with this bike. Way too much twist. Oh, it does a twist. The, um, the, the back end the left on acceleration. Yeah. Way too much lateral twist on it. It's real things. Everything else is really good. I thought it was all designed out. Sorry? I thought it was all designed out. Well, right? um, no, you can really pull it out there. I don't know if it's the size of the bike. You can't get it on that at all. But yeah, you can really feel the back end pickers. And if you accelerate it out of the corner, it's fighting you. Oh really? I don't like this. I, I, this is too underpowered. It's just, I don't like the engine on it at all. Well, it's, I mean, uh, the, the response or... Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's compared to that, when it's talk, 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 and the gearbox is really smooth. This I'm struggling to find the gears, and it's a parallel twin, and it sounds like a sounds like a sew, sewing machine. And compared to that, it's like like is it on? Uh, I, I don't like it. I, don't, I wouldn't buy it. I would I would go for the bigger brother every day. I would go with the box. It's all about the boxer engine when it comes down to it. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad, is it? <laughs> it surprised me. I, I thought I would like this, but it's the engine. It, it, it feels tinny to me, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't feel like, this feels solid and this does not. I'd rather go for the bigger brother every time. It's good, yeah, it's fun, but it feels underpowered and you have to really pull back on the power. Oh. I think we should head back if we're going to get another bike. Yeah. Oh, come on! So that was a little bit of an exchange of thoughts. There, and Toby didn't like the, the R9T for the amount of lateral torque on it. The twist that you throw back on a shaft drive makes the bike feel like it's twisting. You get it very, very slightly on the, on the Aventure. Oh, come on. You let me go. So, two test rides and two, uh, two initial fails on our impressions on them, which is interesting. I thought Toby would love that bike. Now I'm going to be taking out that bike um, as soon as I check this one back in. So uh, you'll have both of our opinions on it. It's a shame. I really thought this might be an option. As I said a moment ago, I was warming to it as I was getting it more into the ride. There is, uh, some, um, there is something about this engine but I think you have to find it and find that sweet spot to get the most out of it. Whereas I think I've been quite spoilt with the, the oodles of torque and buttery smooth power that I've been uh, experiencing with my, my GS Adventure over the last year and a half and all the gadgets that it has. And when you jump on something um, like this, there is uh, obviously a price to pay. And, and for me, it's the the lack of grin factor. So in a nutshell, I think it's a very, very functional, very solid bike, but it doesn't give me that, uh, that grin factor. And I think that's essential when it comes to motorcycles. So we're making our way back now to Roy Pickock. All right, so here we go. There's the dealership up ahead. I hope you enjoyed that little ride on my uh, ramblings and thoughts on the F850 GS. Now let's bring her back nice and safe for the good guys here at Roy Pidcock. There we go. Job done. And I will leave her there. Thanks for watching.